The melting of the in Greenland ice sheet affects acid as you can see, George Soros is having his share of struggles, but is bankruptcy one of them? Something's happened to his vast global network that's absolutely panicking the globalist elite. It's being widely reported that George Soros's Open Society Foundations is experiencing mass layoffs following the recent leadership transition to his son, Alexander Soros. The Open Society Foundations, founded by George Soros back in 1979, which comprised the heart of Soros's vast international NGO networks, recently announced plans to cut almost half of their global workforce. Alexander Soros, the fourth child of George, assumed control of the foundation from his father just a month ago. But it didn't take long for him to shock globalists everywhere, and not in a good way, at least not for them. In an emailed statement, the organization did indeed confirm that they've made the difficult decision to reduce their workforce by at least 40%. Now, of course, the Soros' organization is trying to spin this, claiming that the layoffs and operational changes are intended to enhance its ability to counter the threats faced by open and free societies around the world, blah, blah, blah. Open society emphasized that the new approach would foster a culture of, quote, strategic opportunism among its grantees and support both long-term capital approaches and short-term tactical needs. However, <laughs> many are noting that the decision to reduce the workforce by almost half represents a frankly dramatic shift for the organization now under Alexander's leadership, and it raises the question of the continued relevance and influence of Soros's infamous plans for a new world order. Now, if you don't know, Back in 1993, Soros self-published a paper where he outlined his vision for a new world order. In the article, Soros recognized that the world order that was emerging after the fall of the Soviet Union was a thoroughly nationalist and populist world order, where more and more populations were returning to nation, culture, custom, and tradition. For Soros, such nationalist trends posed a mortal threat to his vision of a globalist, cosmopolitan utopianism marked by the triumph of secular liberalism around the world. And thus, the solution for Soros was the promotion and triumph of what he called open societies, a concept originally proposed and popularized by Karl Popper in his classic work, The Open Society and Its Enemies. According to Popper, open societies are rational societies rooted in science and reason and progress, whereas closed societies are inherently irrational, rooted in tradition and tribalism. Open societies guarantee and protect rational exchange centered on the individual, whereas closed societies force people to submit to authorities and age-old traditions, religious, political, and economic. Soros believed that the triumph of liberal open societies throughout the world represented a truly new world order that transcended both the Cold War era as well as the growing nationalist trends. And it's his Open Society Foundations, more than any other organization on earth, that have provided the finances and the networks to realize just such a world order. But Soros, of course, has been met with a number of obstacles, major ones, that have thus far effectively thwarted his plans for a new world order. And those obstacles, as it turns out, look like they may have mortally wounded Soros' plans. But first, gang, are you ready to join the resistance? Because I'm leading a group of dedicated, courageous patriots who can lead a spearhead into the heart of the secular globalist establishment. We punish Bud Light and Target. We've driven CNN and the legacy media to near bankruptcy. We forced BlackRock to backtrack on ESG. And now we see an amazing Trump-dominated conservative court ending affirmative action and protecting religious liberty. In my Insiders Club, I show you concrete steps to take locally and online that will only keep this mass uprising going until the battle is won. Don't wait. Click the link in my description below and join my Courageous Patriots Insiders Club today.
George Soros has recently been openly admitting that his open societies are indeed waning. They are, in his words, on the defensive as a mass backlash among populations is pushing back against Soros's vision of a new world order. He openly admitted that the tide is turning against him. Those were his very words in a recent in- interview with NPR, and we could see the various waves in that tide. Most recently, the foreign minister of India stood up to Soros and said this. I could take a view that the individual in question, Mr. Soros, is a, a old, rich, opinionated person sitting in New York who still thinks that his views should determine how the entire world works. Now, if I could only stop at old, rich, and opinionated, I would put it away. But he's old, rich, opinionated, and dangerous. That was Indian Foreign Minister Subramaniam Jay Shankar. That, my friends, is what we call a national backlash. India officially wants nothing to do with Soros. A nation that represents one-fifth of the world's population is rejecting his coveted New World Order, as is China, another nation that represents a fifth of the world, as is Russia, and of course, as is his own home country of Hungary. Back in December of 2018, Soros's Open Society Foundations announced that it had become impossible to work in what they called the repressive atmosphere of Hungary and that they were indeed picking up and moving their operations to Berlin. Moreover, Prime Minister Viktor Orban also oversaw the expulsion of Soros's Central European University from Budapest. The Hungarian government, get this, they refused to grant accreditation to the university, which forced them to close their doors and leave Hungary altogether. And then right around the same time in August of 2018, the nation of Poland deported a top Soros organizer, and they were able to have her effectively banned from entering into the EU. More recently, it was reported that the military regime in Myanmar had seized control of the bank accounts of Soros' Open Society Foundation inside their nation and announced that they would be taking legal action against the foundation, which they accused of violating restrictions on the activities of such organizations. And so, as you can see, much of the world is indeed rising up and pushing back against Soros and his Open Society Foundations. And so all of this is to say that while it remains to be seen how these mass layoffs will affect Soros and Sons' efforts uh, and the causes their efforts support, there appears to be little question. Soros' influence is indeed waning. The new world order that he so desperately wanted to build really is crashing down. And it looks like the Open Society Foundations are going down with it.